So where does the Via Dolorosa, or the Way of the Cross, come from? It always helps to know when we're praying the Way of the Cross uh, on Good Friday. And it's not something which was just invented, because we know that the main street, when Jesus was here in Jerusalem, was destroyed. Jerusalem was destroyed nine times. And so two times my height below me would be where that street is. And so we're not there. But what we do know is more or less the area. How do we know that? Well. We know that when Hadrian built his city, we can actually guess where a few things were, you know, but also in the Middle Ages, when the um, Crusaders came, they're the ones that first built some of these chapels. And then when people came afterwards, they wanted to maintain this tradition of following the passion, the footsteps of the passion of our Lord. And the other reason is because the Franciscans, for a very long time, it's part of the status quo, they have a procession in the Holy Sepulchre every day that follows the different stations or moments of the Lord's Passion. Especially in the 16th century, it cost a fortune to go into the Holy Sepulchre because it was controlled by uh, the Turks. And so to get in, or I think it was the Turks or the Muslims, I'm not sure, but to get in, you had to pay quite a bit of money. Not everybody could do that. So the Franciscans brought those stations or those uh, moments of Christ's passion out into the way that Jesus would have walked, even if it was much down below our feet. So I just want to read a couple of things that pilgrims from the ages have written. This is from the 1200s. It says, at the end of the street is a gate looking leading to the temple which is called the Sorrowful Gate. From there, our Lord Jesus went to Mount Calvary to be crucified. For that reason, it is called Sorrowful. To the right of the Jehoshaphat Street, remember it's the Valley of Jehoshaphat out there by Kidron Valley, is, that's it, there is a monastery said to be the rest place where Jesus rested or was, you know, there in prison in a sense. Then they say there is a prison where he was put uh, to the right, to the night of his capture, and then a little bit forward to that in the street there was part of Pilate's house. So it's very interesting what these pilgrims say. There's another one who speaks about coming from the Probatica, that is Bethesda, the pools of Bethesda, and then you continue forward toward where Herod was, where Pilate was. They speak about a place of Simon Cyrene, a Cyrene. And then in the fifth and sixth century, they have this compilation, which I think is very interesting. As I said, they begin like this. Sometimes it was not granted permission to enter into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then the Friars Minor led the pilgrims to other holy places. Going from the sepulchre to the east, now you find a road for which Christ came up with his cross to be put to death. And then you see a number of things on that path. It speaks about the fact that the ancient gate of the city by the pool of Bethesda was there. And then the Lord would have been sentenced to death. That There was a place where the Virgin Mary was there. And then you go through a gate, you pass by Simon's house, etc. So this is where the way of the cross comes from, the way of the cross that we follow. What I want to show you now, however, is a map which indicates and helps us to understand what the city of Jerusalem, the old city of Jerusalem, looked like at the time of Christ. Follow me. So this is one of my favorite maps that the Franciscans, one of the brothers, made. And you just follow my stick. There's some important things to note. This is the city at the time of the Lord, and actually just after him. Here would have been Mount Zion, in this area the Last Supper. They'd have come down all the way, perhaps, on the side of the city through here, through the Kidron Valley, perhaps. But this was their goal. This is Gethsemane. This is the Olive Press. All of this is the Mount of Olives in this area. Now I'm going to jump to a different moment in Christ's life when he ascended into heaven. You cross the Mount of Olives and you get to a place where he would go often to rest, and that is Bethany. So he would have begun uh, his entrance to the city uh, on Palm Sunday, coming down the Mount of Olives and into the temple area. But we're interested in the way of the cross. 
I said that we're probably in the area of the Antonine Tower, which is right here. Now, some of the people actually have this wall here. Some of them have it a little bit on the outside. But the most important thing is we're in this area. What I love is this little courtyard right here. You have the steps and you have something here, which could have been very clearly a stone pavement. This would have been the judgment of the Lord. You can imagine Pontius Pilate sitting right here. And then he would have left right in this area. So here you see the pools of Bethesda and you see this pathway. And look at where it goes. It may have zigzagged a little bit more than it has on this map, but straight to a gate. We could call that in a way the judgment gate where he would have left and gone up to an abandoned quarry where they have placed on this map three crosses and a tomb right here. So this is what is so important. Now, you'll notice at the top of the map would have been Herod's palace, where he first spoke with Pilate. At one point, Pilate said, well, let Herod judge him. He went right across the city to see Herod. Herod didn't get a word out of Jesus. He went back here and then made the way of the cross. You'll notice that there's walls here. Those walls were built after, just after the Lord's death and resurrection, very interestingly. And there's different walls even now. And this gives us an understanding of the way of the cross. Now, since this is our road today, right next to Bethesda, what we will do is this, go up, and then we actually have to take a turn at some point, and we'll be in what they call another valley. It's the Tiraprion Valley, which you almost can't tell is a valley. This is a low part of the city and you make your way up this way you have to twist and turn because this whole area look at how large that is would have been the church that constantine and helen built over calvary and the tomb so we have to zigzag a bit to get to calvary and then the 14th station when he's laid in the tomb so this gives us an understanding of where the lord walked